The Signal Oil Program. Yes, the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is top two, tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies independently operated signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Solid Citizen. Harry Cummings stood at the window of the general store he'd inherited from his father, along with the goodwill the senior Cummings had built in the small fishing village of Bayville. Harry's eyes followed the tiny wisps of fog sweep in before the approaching darkness. He smugly watched the fishing boats as they moved slowly out to sea, boats that were manned by people who looked up to Harry, respected him. Harry Cummings had used the well-earned reputation of his father to cover up his own lack of character, and gloated secretly that he'd successfully fooled his fellow townsmen who looked upon him as an up-and-coming man. But he wasn't satisfied. For the one thing he wanted most of all, the one thing he plotted, schemed for, was still out of reach, and had been for years. He set his jaw, turned from the window, and walked behind the store counter. It was odd, he thought, that time had not eased his longing for her. That each spring increased this longing and made him more determined than ever to win the woman he'd lost to another. And he was ready to go to any length to bring this about. Then, as he prepared to close the store for the night, he heard the front door open and she walked in. Well. Well. Evening, Sarah. Hello, Harry. You're getting to be quite a stranger. I've, I've been rather busy. Ah, oh, sure. Harry, this bill came this morning. Is it correct? $345? Must be, Sarah. Nat's been handling my books for years. Hasn't made a mistake yet. I... I just thought that Jeff had paid something on it last month. He, he told me he would. Oh, don't worry. Jeff will take care of it soon, I'm sure. Well, the tuna runs in. Yeah, heavier than it's been in years. Well, Jeff's probably out there right now. No. No, he's been drinking again. He and that Frenchy Tobias. I don't know what's come over him, Harry. He's changed so. What's Frenchy? He's just no good for Jeff. Oh, no, 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 Sarah. I'm sorry. Just that I'm, I'm so upset with this bill. And... Yeah, I understand. And I don't want you to think about it anymore. I can wait, Sarah. I'm used to it. You've been very kind, Harry. You know how I feel, Sarah. I've always felt about you. Maybe I've just been kidding myself, but somehow I know there's a chance for us yet. No, Harry, no. I belong to Jeff. He loves me, and I've got but to... But you don't love him. him. Don't say things like that, Harry, please. All right. All right, sir. I think I'd better go now. I have to stop at a cafe and see Mr. Loomis. You could put in a good word for me there, Harry. What? I've been thinking I want to earn some money. I've never done anything but keep house, but... I know I could learn to wait on table. Well, that's pretty tiring work, Sarah. Now, look, uh, I could use some help here at the store. Oh, no, no. I, I don't think that would be right, Harry. Well, I'll tell you what, then. I'll talk to Jeff about the bill tonight, uh, right away. Oh, no, no, you mustn't. He, 
He'd be angry if he knew I came to Oh, no, he won't believe me. Hey, maybe I can do something to straighten him out. <laughs> After all, Jeff and I used to be pretty good friends. It's very kind of you, but I don't think it would do. Well, let me give it a try. If it doesn't work, <laughs> then we'll talk about a job. All right. Good night, Harry. <laughs> Yes, Harry, you're going to have a talk with Jeff for her sake, and for his, too. That's what Sarah thinks. A noble gesture, isn't it? But you meant every word when you said you'd do anything for her. Yes, anything. Even though the law says she belongs to another man. You know you're smart enough to change all that. And it will happen sooner or later. And one day she'll be Mrs. Harry Cummings. Moments after she's gone, you close the store, throw on your top coat against the chill of the wetting fog, walk two sand-gritted blocks to the wooden dock. You can hear the easy flap of the bay against Jeff Fisher, the throaty blast of a steamer beyond the bay's mouth. You climb aboard the small boat and make your way along the cluttered deck, and then stop before the cabin door. <laughs> Frenchy Tobias stands before you. Over his shoulder, you can see Jeff Lancaster sitting at the table, a whiskey bottle within easy reach. He looks at you sullenly over a deck of cards he shuffles. Well, Mr. Cummings, huh? Glad to have you aboard. Evening, Jeff. Frenchy, a chair for Mr. Cummings. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it brings you around. Your bill, Jeff. It's getting pretty steep. I was wondering if you'd be able to pay something on it before long. I don't get impatient. Pay off as soon as I get a good haul. You'll never get it anchored here in port. Now, look, solid citizen. I don't need you telling me when to fish. Get lost. Got a pull up anchor. We aren't going out tonight, are we, Jeff? The boys are expecting you at Joe's place. Fog's so thick now, you wouldn't get out anyway. Ah, uh, fog don't stop me. Never had it yet. Well, I can send this boat three miles out without even touching the wheel. Taking quite a chance, aren't you? Oh, uh, not me. I know this channel like my hands. Come here, I'll show you. I set the wheel like this and jam it with this chunk of wood. With a tide the way it is, she's headed seaward. I could start her up wearing gear. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it too, haven't I, Frankie? Yeah, sure, Jeff, but the boys are expecting Ah, you. go on over and tell the boys I can't make it. I'll warm her up. Okay, okay I'm going. And hurry back, we're sailing out. You're alone with Jeff now, Harry. Watch him as he staggers back to the table, drops into the chair. He picks up the card, shuffles them, then looks up at you and grins. His eyes are half closed, fighting off sleep. Sit down, Harry. Oh, come on, sit down. Let me buy you a drink. Huh? Thanks, Jeff. Oh, I thought. You don't take care. Hey, look, Jeff, you're out on your feet. Better turn off that motor and get to bed. I'm all right. I'll just grab a few winks until Frenchy gets back. So then we're pulling off. Jeff, you're in no condition. Ah, oh, get lost. Will you get lost? I'm going to take a nap. You watch him slump face down on the table. Your eyes swing around the cabin to the controls. You stare at the wheel jammed with a block of wood. And then suddenly the thought hits you. The sound of the motor begins to pound into your brain. And Jeff's words come back to you. I set the wheel like this. Jam it with this block of wood. I was the tide the way it is. She's headed seaward. I could start her up. Put her in gear. You look back at Jeff, sound asleep. Then slowly you walk over to him and stand there for a moment. Then you reach over to the shelf behind him, 
and your hand closes around the heavy monkey wrench. No use hurrying, Frenchie. Huh? Oh, it's you. You're too late. What? Well, you know how Jeff is when he's drunk. I couldn't talk him out of going. He decided not to wait. He sailed without you. He... He's just gone? That's right. He's gone. With the prologue of Solid Citizen, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. Of course, you carry a road map in your car, but how old is it? When was it printed? Does it have all the latest road changes and conditions in it? You can be sure that yours has if you'll stop by the nearest signal service station and replace your antiquated model with one of Signal's brand new road maps. They're just off the press. So, of course, these new signal maps have the very latest road information. But in addition, they include many more helpful extras to make motoring more fun. A radio log, for instance, to tell you where to tune in your favorite programs while you're traveling. Plus a guide to interesting places to visit, a western state mileage chart, and enlarged sections of metropolitan areas. What's more, although these new signal maps are large in size for easy reading, they have the improved accordion fold, so they'll be equally easy to handle. Get one, and you'll agree, signal really goes all out to give you the best. That goes for a free signal map, as well as for a tank full of signal. The famous Go Farther Gasoline. You've seen, plotted many things. But the thought of murder had never occurred to you before, had it, Harry? Then suddenly it was there. As you stood over the sleeping Jeff Lancaster in the cabin of his small fishing boat, in a moment of swift decision, you found the solution to your problem, and it was all so simple. As you watched Jeff's boat move smoothly into the fog, disappear, you knew exactly what would happen. It would move straight out to sea for several miles, then caught in the racing current, it would swerve, drift into the Devil's Grotto five miles down the coast. And then it would crack to pieces on the rocks lining the shore. With Jeff dead, nothing could stand between you and Sarah. You wait anxiously in the days that follow for news of the tragedy to reach the village. On the street, in your store, in the Starfish Cafe, the talk is all about Jeff. Say, Mr. Cummings, I understand you were the last one to see Jeff that night. That's right. Yes, I was. Tried to talk him out of sailing, but uh, he'd been drinking. Wouldn't listen. You find yourself repeating the lie over and over. And they believe you, don't they, Harry? Yes, you're Harry Cummings. Solid citizen. Well-liked, respected. Why shouldn't they believe you? And then early on the morning of the fourth day, the news finally comes. Jeff's boat has been found, and you phoned Sarah. Yes, Harry, I heard about it a few minutes ago. The sheriff came by. He and some of his men were headed to the grotto. I wanted to go, but... Oh, no, no, it's too much for you, Sarah. But it's Jeff's alive, hurt. Look, let me go for you. I'll start right now. You stay home and rest. I'll do all I can. <laughs> Three quarters of an hour later, you park your car high on the cliffs overlooking the treacherous grotto. Below you, a rock-torn gash in her hull, Jeff's boat lies on a spot of sand beached by low tide. There are several men standing around the battered fissure, among them Sheriff Tanner. You make your way down over the jagged rocks and approach the sober-faced group. Hello, Sheriff. Boy. Oh, morning, Mr. Cummings. Good morning, Harry. Well, you came down the hard way now. Yeah. Easier path, just north of here. Well, Sarah, uh, Mrs. Lancaster asked me to check. Uh, naturally, she's not feeling well. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, uh, did you find... No, nope. he's not around. Washed overboard, I guess. Oh, I see. 
Funny thing, though, the way the wheel is set in place with a block of wood. Oh, quite a few fishermen use that trick, Sheriff. Uh-huh. Holds the rudder in place while they work with their line. That's right. Jeff used to set it that way. Let the boat steer itself through the bay. Made sort of a game of it. Uh-huh. Well, looks like he played his last game. No, I wouldn't be too sure about that. After all, the rubber life raft is missing. You know, Jeff could be on that. What? No, I, I don't think so. Coast Guard's been on the lookout. They'd have found him. Yeah, maybe. But he could have been picked up by another boat, you know. It's days later, and they still haven't found the body, have they, Harry? It bothers you, doesn't it? But you have other things to think of. Yes. Things like the accusations made by Frenchy Tobias to the sheriff. Frenchy here has been doing some crazy talking, Harry. I figured he ought to say it straight out to you. We could clear it up quick. Certainly, Sheriff. Uh-huh. Go ahead, Frenchy. Well, when I left the boat that night, Jeff was awfully drunk. He set the wheel with a chunk of wood, just like it was when the boat was wrecked. Mr. Cummings here heard him say that the boat could go out all by itself. Why, yes, I believe I did. The way the boat headed straight back for the Devil's Grotto, it looked, it looked just like it bore out and drifted back. Exactly how would it be if no one touched the wheel? So? So I think that you put the boat in gear, Mr. Cummings. Cut her loose and let her go. I think maybe Jeff passed out. Or you hit him on the head with something. Oh, I see. Now, you, you, you understand, Harry. Frenchy has lost his best friend. He's not thinking yes. straight. Yes, I understand, Sheriff. Look, Frenchy, you realize, of course, I had no reason to murder Jeff Lancaster? You used to be in love with his wife. What? Yes, that's true. Everyone knows that. I still think a great deal of Sarah. But to say I murdered her husband, I'd, well, it's simply fantastic, that's all. That's my feelings too, Harry. Frenchy is going to have to take the loss of his friend like a man. Keep his fancies to himself. No, I figured no one would even listen to me. You'd be believed if you had any proof. But you can't just say, I think, or I believe and be heard. Don't you see? Yes, I see. That ever since I was a kid and kicked around by my people... I never had a chance till Jeff took me in. Jeff certainly had his good points. He gave me a job treating me human. I hate this town. If I had the money, I'd leave. Now cut that stuff out. Easy, you... Sheriff. Like you said, he's lost a friend, a good one. And we must understand. He needs help. And I'm willing to lend a hand. Frenchy, look. I'm buying a fishing boat. You're not only going to work on it, you're running it. Huh? Well, you're, you're making fun of me. No. I mean it. Harry is making you a most generous offer, Frenchy. Oh, I, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, why am I always so wrong? Well, now, oh. how about it? Are we partners? Well, I... I guess so. Sure. Well, you might thank him. But thanks. I... Thanks, Mr. Cummings. Very much. Uh, I'll, I'll see you later. <laughs> It was uncomfortably close, wasn't it, Harry? And now you have to buy a second-hand fishing boat and turn it over to Frenchy. But it's worth it, isn't it? Because you can stop worrying about him. Your action not only turns his anger into gratitude, it makes you a generous man in the admiring eyes of the town. Frenchy came in with his third load of tuna today, Harry. Ah. Yeah, I watched him unload. <laughs> Say, he's so proud of himself in that boat that he hasn't even hired a helper. <laughs> Does all the work himself. He'll turn out fine, Sheriff. You'll see. <laughs> sure. Thanks to you, Harry. <laughs> it's been three weeks since Jeff's broken boat was found in Devil's Grotto. You gambled with murder, Harry. And now that Sarah's working for you at the store, you feel that you've won. You decide that it's time to start forming Sarah's thoughts your way. You've been very patient with her up to now, haven't you? Very patient. Then one evening, as you call on her at her house, you know that Sarah seems disturbed. Oh, it's nothing really, Harry. I'm, I'm real jumpy, I guess. Uh, Frenchie stopped me on my way home from work. Oh? He said, you're working for Harry Cummings now. And I said, yes. And he said, don't ever forget, Jeff may still be alive, Sarah. He could have been afloat in a life raft and then picked up by a freighter and taken to a far port. And he just walked on. Harry, 
Do you think that might have happened? That Jeff may still be alive somewhere? Yes. Highly unlikely, Sarah. I wouldn't listen to Frenchie. Oh, I'll try not to, Harry. I'm I'm so grateful you gave me a job. I'm going to pay all the Lancaster debt. I just won't feel right till I do. I wish you wouldn't work so hard, though. Well, you work harder than anyone else in the store. Good for me. And make me forget things. I could make you forget everything, Sarah. If you'd only let me. Look, Sarah, I... Oh, I know. Please, Harry. You must wait. Wait, Harry. Wait. The word becomes one that you detest, doesn't it? And as days pass into weeks and weeks into months, it's still the same. Wait. Wait, Sarah. How long must we wait to start living? It's been six months. Oh, why don't you marry me now? Oh, it's still too soon. People would say that... Oh, really, Harry, there is another reason. It's the, it's the thought that Jeff might still be alive somewhere, as Frenchie says. As Frenchie says. Sarah, you'd have heard from Jeff by now. Oh, I tell myself that, too, but... Every time Frenchy sees me, he stops and talks about Jeff. Why, why, only this evening you said it was Jeff who taught him all he knew about fishing. Frenchy was very fond of Jeff. Well, I'll tell him to leave you alone. Please don't scold him. He, he doesn't mean any harm. He's harming you. He worries you. Oh, no, he doesn't. He reminds me of Jeff, yes. But I suppose I think of him anyway. More coffee, Harry? <laughs> Frenchie's ruining everything, isn't he, Harry? Jeff's devoted friend. And you can't stand it much longer. The waiting must stop. And walking home that night, you know, there's really only one way. It's been the answer before, hasn't it, Harry? You decide that it must serve you again. You walk past your own place that night, thinking it all out, step by step. Discarding one method for another. And then, quite suddenly, you have it. And it's simple, isn't it? All you have to do is make sure of one thing. You do the very next day. Frankie? Oh, Frankie. Yeah? Oh, Mr. Cummings. Hello there. How was it today? Oh, fair catch, Mr. Cummings. But I came in early. Oh? You, uh, going out tonight? That's right. <laughs> You're a hard worker, Frankie. Best fisherman on the dock. Almost as good as Jeff Lancaster. Nobody's as good as Jeff Lancaster. Ah. Uh, he was a good teacher, wasn't he? Jeff, he taught me all I know. Yeah, sure, sure he did. Say, uh, you use the same method, don't you? Uh, I mean, even the block of wood on the wheel and all oh, that. Oh, that's a good idea. man can run his boat and get some rest, too. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> and speaking of rest, Frenchie, you better get some for tonight. Well, I was just going up to my room, Mr. Cummings, making sure the boat was ready, that's all. Well, I'll, I'll see you later. Yeah, sure, Frenchie. Sure you will. <laughs> The dock is deserted when you return that night. You've timed it so that you'll arrive a little before Frenchie does, because you've something to take care of. It doesn't take long, does it, Harry? A few sturdy blows with a heavy wrench, and you manage to loosen the sea cocks in the forward part of the boat. Not much. Just enough to let the water begin to seep into the hole. In an hour or so, the sea will accomplish the rest, won't it? Frenchie will go down with the boat, and the last threat to your happiness will be removed. Frankie, the stupid, devoted friend who won't stop reminding Sarah that Jeff may be alive. A few minutes later, he comes onto the dock. Hello. Hello there. Somebody on board? Yeah, it's me, Frenchie. Hello, Mr. Cummings. Huh. I wanted to see you off on your trip. See me off? Oh, now look, Mr. Cummings, you didn't have to do that. This trip's no different than a dozen others I've made. You didn't have to come down. And... Oh, you're wrong, Frenchie. I did have to come down. This trip is different. Mr. Cummings, I, I don't understand. Well, you will, partner. Come on, come aboard. We'll talk it over. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. But now, for just a moment, suppose this were a quiz program. What would your answer be if you were asked the question, what gasoline is famous as the go-farther gasoline? Well, of course, everyone knows that Signal is a famous go-farther gasoline. 
But suppose the next question was, what makes signal gasoline give such good mileage? Well, an engineer might answer that question by saying, other things being equal, gasoline mileage is in direct ratio to the efficiency of engine operation. Or, translated into simpler language, today's signal gasoline gives you such good mileage because it helps your engine run more efficiently. That's the important answer to remember. Because when your engine runs more efficiently, you also enjoy faster pickup and smoother power, more of the things that make driving more fun. That's why, whether you're a driver who wants economy or one who demands performance, the answer is the same. You find both in Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. It's almost over, Harry. You have the monkey wrench in readiness, the same one you use to knock the seacocks loose. And you know that at this moment, water is already seeping into the forward hold. You're both in the cabin now, and you have only to knock Frenchie out and send the little boat out to sea. Anyway, in an hour or less, there will be enough seawater in the hold to sink her. Sink her deep. And then suddenly Frenchie has something to say. Something that surprises you. I, I don't know how you found out, Mr. Cummings. You, you seem to figure these things... Uh, anyway, you're right. This was to be a different trip. What do you mean, Frenchie? Well, I, I plan to run away. Steal the boat? Oh, no, I'd have sent it back somehow, but I wanted to leave this town, Mr. Cummings. Get away, go places where I'm not always reminded of just your good friend. Yeah. You've been a friend, too. Only I haven't well, been very grateful, I guess. Oh, you've been all right, Frenchie. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. You were trying to help me. And all the time I hated you. Thought things about you. Well, never mind that now, Frank. But I do mind. Jeff at mine, too. He wants Sarah to be happy with you or somebody. So I'm I'm going away, Mr. Carly. Uh, now, wait a minute. Sure, I know you want to stop me. Because you're kind and good. Well, you're not going to stop me, Mr. Cummings. Forgive me for this, but I'm not going to ruin your happiness anymore. Forgive you? For what, Frenchie? I, I don't... For this! <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Cummings. Honest, I am. I didn't want to knock you out, much less tie you up. But I knew you'd talk me out of leaving if I didn't. That's the way you are. Always trying to help somebody. And I'm not worth helping you. You stay here. On the boat! It's, it's really yours anyway. By the time you wake up, I'll be gone and out of your way. Goodbye, Mr. Cummings. Oh, I hope, hope you and Sarah will be very happy together. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at the same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Joseph Kern, Sarah Selby, and Ross Forrester. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Leona Shirley, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at the same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.